Welcome everybody, it's Monday the 4th of May um, and this is a webinar with Jennifer Wozniak, Grammar is Fun. So I'm Helen Mize, I'm Chair of the AWR London branch um, and Joe Dale is going to be moderating the session in the um, YouTube live stream which I hope is working. Um, the webinar is being facilitated by the support of Heike Philp who's given us loads and loads of help on how to do these sorts of things. But the person you've come to see is Jennifer Wozniak, Assistant Head Teacher for Teaching and Learning and Specialist Leader of Education in Teaching and Learning in MFL at the Hollins in Lancashire. And she has a wide experience of teaching French from Key Stage 1 to Key Stage 4. She's been involved in school to school support. And you will see this. She has an absolute passion for teaching languages. We've seen that when she's presented at our AWL London events and at national events. So I'm really, really looking forward to this. Um, this is all run by volunteers, people who belong to the Association for Language Learning principally. Um, and I really hope that as many of you as possible will consider joining if you're not members already. Could you use this opportunity please in the chat to say if you are a member and if you could encourage people throughout to join, that would be great. Um, you know, there'll be a link in the chat window soon as to where this will be stored and where you can see other webinars. And I'd like to particularly advertise three which are coming up. One which has only just been released today, this Thursday, May the 7th, we've got the Institut Francais. So um, they, um, who absolutely adore Jennifer Wozniak, they, I know that you've spoken for them as well. Um, and they're going to be giving us lots of information about what's online to support teachers of French. And then the next Tuesday, May the 12th, we've got Natalie Campbell coming to show us Shobi for remote learning. And there's going to be music on May the 14th. We've got Paco Fernandez, who's going to be telling us about music and IT. So now, without any further ado, I'm going to stop and I'm going to pass over to the wonderful Jennifer Wozniak. Thank you, Helen. Uh, <clears throat> OK, so can everyone see my screen now? Yes. Yeah, okay, perfect. Yes. Um, so my session tonight is about grammar um, and why grammar is fun. Um, first of all, I thought that talking about grammar is really important um, and I'm not reinventing the wheel. I'm just going to show you loads and loads of different activities uh, that I use in every single of my lessons with all my classes to practice grammar because I really, and I strongly believe that if our students can master the grammar, then they will be fine. Um, and it's easy then to, you know, um, to teach any type of vocab and so on. So I really try to, um, to do loads of different um, grammar practice in every single of my lessons. So um, the first one, very easy. I don't know if it's the same in your school, but in my school, we have to greet the students at the door. So what I do with some of my classes, I have a whiteboard with me. And on my whiteboard, I might put like, for example, a verb in the past tense or a verb in the future tense. And as the kids enter the room, they have to tell me um, either like, you know, if it was a tense, in the, a verb in the past tense, they will say any verb in any form in the past tense. So they might say, you know, je suis allé, j'ai regardé, j'ai visité, elle a joué, whatever. Um, so from the first um, moment they get in, they start speaking in the, in the language. But what is very interesting as well is that some students at the door, they're just like, ooh, kind of like they've forgotten maybe their past future or whatever tense, you know, I'm asking them to do. But usually what they do is that they let all the pupils go in front of them and they listen to some and then that almost tr trigger their memory and then they give me another one. So that's an easy one to do. Something that, um, as well, I'm sure you do, uh, same as me, you know, we have to do the register in every single of my lesson. Um, and I think the, the register can be something boring. And from that moment, same thing, I want my students to be speaking, you know, uh, in French, Spanish, whatever the language you're teaching. So I might ask them to give me, you know, a verb. So it, it can be an infinitive. It can be, you know, a certain verb um, using um a tense that you want, I can do it on different pronouns. You can, you can use any type of grammar, it can be an adjective, it can be anything, an adverb and, and, and things like that. Um, so same thing, is just to encourage the students to, uh, to do it. With some of my key stage four, um, what I do as well, is that actually I want them to tell me a story. So I will give them 
a tense, so let's say the future tense, and as I do the register, so if I use my year 11 uh, as an example, Mariam is the first one on my list, so she might say, you know, um, ce soir, je vais jouer au foot. So tonight, I'm going to play football. And then I will say Matthew, the next, the next one, and Matthew needs to add to that story. So you can say, you know, uh, avec mes copains, so with my friends, and so on. So the first time you do it, you know, you might have to prompt the students that what they might want to say. So you might say a few things in, in, in English for them to say it in tight language. But as soon as you do it a couple of times, then the students, they, they just... They, they become a lot more creative and the stories are a lot more natural um, as well. So that could be um, something very easy to, um, to do. Something else that I do sometimes as a, as a starter, all my starters are not linked to uh, what I'm teaching. I always use knowledge retrieval and I try to use loads of grammar. So like for example, that's an easy, a very easy one that I do. So what did you do uh, yesterday? And they just need to give me um, a sentence in the past tense. So sometimes they do it on their mini whiteboard. Sometimes I just ask, you know, uh, some, um, some students randomly. It really depends. Okay, one of the favorite activity, and it's a shame that I don't have my uh, materials with me because everything is at school, but, um, and I've shown that activity to some of you, but a few years ago, you know, the fidget spinners drove um, absolutely every single one of us completely insane, and I ended up uh, confiscating a lot of them, and at the end of the year, when I opened one of my drawers in school, I ended up with so many of them, and I was like, well, the kids never claimed them back, so I guess they are mine now. So what I decided to do is that on, a, on an A4 piece of paper, like, more like a card paper, if you want, in the middle of the paper, I've put some blue stick, and I stuck the fidget spinner on it. Then around the, sp the fidget spinner, I've just wrote the subject pronoun. So je, tu, il, elle, un, nous, vous, il, elle. And then on the, sp the fidget spinner, I just put like a little arrow. And <clears throat> what, I, what I do, one of the activities with my classes is that in pairs, they will have, so in total, I've got 16 different ones. So they can, um, they can play this activity in pairs. So on my board, on the slide, I would have a list of infinitives. Um, so it could be any infinitives that you want. And then on my board as well, I will have a tense. So same thing, it can be the tense that you want as well. And what the students have to do, they um, spin the fidget spinner. When it lands on one of the subject pronouns, they have to look at the board, look at the first infinitive, and they have to conjugate that infinitive in the tense that you've picked and using the pronoun that um, um, and, uh, landed you know, when they uh, spin um, the, the, the fidget spinner. So then now you might think, okay, but how on earth do you check that what they think is the right answer is right? So it's very easy. What I ask them to do, I just ask them to write their answers on the whiteboard. Um, so if it was the verb regarder, to watch, and if it was the past tense, and it landed on L, they should write on their whiteboard, L a regarder. And then they carry on and they take turns and they do that. Uh, and then during that time, what I do is that I go around the classroom, I look at their mini whiteboard, and I just either like tick or put a little cross if it was not, not right. But it's an easy way. And the kids absolutely love it. And don't get me wrong, a lot of the activities I'm going to show you, you could say, well, I could just be testing them, saying, how do you say she watched? How do you say I went? And things like that. But I think it's just because we do it in a different way, in a fun way, that suddenly they really like conjugating. And as soon as they can do it, and then it's all, almost become second nature, well, then um, personally, I'm really happy with that. Something else that I do to, um, um, you, you know, that was an activity, a homework with year seven that I asked them to do. So when we did the topic of food and um, we learned how to conjugate, you know, manger and boire, so to eat and to drink, in the present tense, then as a little homework, I said, just be creative and create any type of bugs. Um, and they created some lovely, the only issue with that is then obviously you cannot put them in the bin, you have to keep them as a display a bit in your classroom for a bit of time. So, um, you know, you have to find some space, but um, it's, a, it's something nice that you, uh, that you might want to do. Something else that I do um, is that, obviously, if you look at the sentences one to five, they are all incorrect. 
Um, and it's one of the activities that I use as a starter. So I put that on the board. The students know that the five, um, um, the five bullet points are wrong, and they need to tell me what is the right answer. So same thing, they do it on their whiteboard, they can do it in pairs, they can use their book, and so on. Um, but also to uh, stretch the more able, I want them to give me a justification and explanation in the target lang language about why it is not correct. So like, for example, number one, you needed an, an extra E and an extra S at the, end, at the end of ça. And then the explanation, even if they just said to me, well, parce que c'est féminin et pluriel, because it's feminine and plur plural, that's absolutely fine by, you know, uh, by me. So same thing, I tried to put um, some of the mistakes that I know they do all the time, you know, the j'ai allé, we see it, you know, quite a lot. Le malheureusement, or you know the, the words that the students struggle spelling, you know, in French, beaucoup, ennuyeux, malheureusement, all those words. So I keep, you know, put it up, put it up, put it up, put it up, and until the kids really nail it and know how to spell, um, to spell those words. Uh, okay, the spinning wheel, I've presented that idea a few times. If you go on Google and you type spinning wheel for PowerPoint, it's completely free. And uh, it comes at one wheel, but obviously you can copy and paste and have as many as you want on your slide. Um, as I said, it's not that I'm lazy, but I'm trying to make my life a bit easier. So what I do, I've got one with the subject pronoun, as you can see, and one with the infinitive. And at the top, you can see my title that said le passé, but the only thing that I have to do is just to change that to le présent, l'imparfait, le conditionnel, le futur, whatever you want. And what it does, well, you know, the, the wheels are spinning. Then what is really key, you ask some of your students to say stop because they love it, they think they've got the power, they think that they've picked it. So same thing, you ask them to stop. So it's il and it's aimé. So on the whiteboard, they have to write he liked um, in French and then very quickly. And same again, as I said before, you could have asked them, had you say he liked and them showing them straight on the whiteboard. Just because there's a will on the, on the slide and just because it's spinning and just because they say stop, they really like it and it's, it's one that you can do um, all the time and very easy to adapt as well. Um, okay, this one, um, obviously you won't do it all the time because it does cost a bit of money, um, but um, the little story behind that is that a few years ago, when I was, um, I love chocolate, I really, really like chocolate. Um, <clears throat> And I was driving back, uh, back from work and I was eating um, a, a bar of chocolate. And I was in the car and obviously, you know, I was thinking about my next lessons that I needed to plan with all my classes. And then once I, e I was eating the, uh, the chocolate bar, I realized that there's six little uh, pieces of chocolate, like six subject pronouns. I was like, wow, that's amazing. You know, the kids could conjugate with chocolate bars. So then instead of going home, I went to the shop, bought one for every single of my year, 10 students, put um, an infinitive on it. So at that point, when we did it, we were looking at the imperfect. So, you know, uh, what they used to do when they were little. So same thing as well. What I did, some verbs were you know, regular verbs, I had some irregular verbs as well. But then back in the classroom, I gave a chocolate bar with a verb on it to every single of my students. The same thing I knew, like for example, the être, I didn't, I didn't give être to low ability students uh, because um, I thought that's best if I give it to, you know, a higher prior, prior attainer or, you know, someone, someone like that. So I was thinking carefully about the ones that I, were, I was giving out. And then what the students had to do, part of the deal, is that on their whiteboard, they had to conjugate their verb that I gave them using every single subject pronoun, um, and they had to conjugate it in the imperfect, but they could only eat the chocolate if they added the correct answer. So I said to them, if you've got only three subject pronouns right out of six, it's three pieces of chocolate for you and three for me, which obviously they didn't really like. So actually this activity took quite a bit of time because the kids wouldn't show me their whiteboard. They were just, they kept like showing everyone in the classroom to check that they had all the right answer just to be able to eat the chocolate, but that did work. So obviously, as I said, I won't do this activity all the time, 
because it does cost a bit of money, but once in a while it's nice to do something, uh, something different. I also use uh, songs quite a lot because I think it's a great aid, you know, to, um, well, that helps, you know, with memory. And, um, and there's loads of different ways for the students to remember, you know, the ending uh, or certain verbs um, by singing. So this one, obviously, you all know this one, you know, the, the, the ping pong fair, you know, j'ai, tu as, il a, elle a, on a, nous avons, vous avez, ils ont, elles ont, you know, and, and, and so on. But what is really important with singing as well is that, yes, your students are going to remember that song really, really well if you practice it with, with them, but do not forget to make sure that they know what tu mean, what elle mean, what vous mean, and so on, because they might know the song, but if they don't know what it actually means um, in English, well, that's not actually going to help them. Um, you know, on their writing, on their speaking, you know, and so on. So always make sure that they know very carefully um, what, obviously, uh, what, what it means. Now, you might ask, because I've just copied that um, slide for one of my PowerPoints, you might ask why I've got a little ghost at the end of um, some of the words. It's just because my students know that when there's a ghost, it means it's a um, silent letter. So they should not be saying the, the, the S, the Z, or the T at the end of the word. Um, so, <clears throat> so that's one of them. I use also this one. Um, if you go on YouTube and if you do not know Etienne, um, he's wonderful. Um, he, there's loads of uh, some of his songs that you can use, you know, um, when you do the imperfect, when you do, you know, he, he does absolutely loads. So this one it works with the imperfect and the conditional. So I'll just show you a quick extract. <laughs> So obviously it goes on and on and on and on. So by the end of it, same thing, the students will know the ending and you, you'll see them, you know, in their head, they will be uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, it. But same thing again, what I've just mentioned before, then they need to know that the uh, yes goes with the je, then with the tu. So same thing, if they don't know the order of the subject pronouns, that won't work. So it's all, you know, how to put everything really to, um, together. Oops, we don't want to use to it again. And um, when I teach the present tense, and with my year seven, when I start introducing, you know, the present tense, um, so with the um, ER verbs, I use, you know, the old McDonald's other form. So, E, E, S, E, O, N, S, E, Z, E, N, T, E, E, S, E, O, N, S, E, Z, E, N, T, you know, and, and we sing it and sing it and sing, and, and sing it as well. Um, and same thing, it's something that they remember really, really well. Um, for the uh, present tense, the IR verbs, so I use that um, video as a free planning, so something that they need to study at home before they come to the lesson, just because um, the talking is in, um, um, in English, but actually because they love that video so much, we always then do it again in the, in the classroom, so I'll just show you a tiny bit of it. Um, <clears throat> There are three groups of verbs in the French language. There's ER, RE, and IR verbs. Let's look only at IR. There are hundreds of IR verbs in the French language, but let's just use finir as an example. Finir is an IR verb, well, because it ends in an IR. And to conjugate this verb, <laughs> I have to drop the IR and add on the following endings. IS, IS, IT. I-S-S-O-N-S, I-S-S-E-Z, I-S-S-E-N-T. Too complicated? Well, it's recently come to my attention that there's the I-R verb dance. I-S, I-S, I-T, I-S-S-O-N-S, I-S-S-E-Z, I-S-S-E-N-T, I-S, I-S, I-T, I-S-S-O-N-S, Remix, remix. I S 
I S I T I S S O O S. So you get you you get the idea. So first, I just thought, oh, you know, it's in English. I don't want to do it, you know, in class. Um, so that's why I did it as flip learning. And every single year with every single of my classes, then they want to sing it in class. So we all sing it um, together. But that's a good way, same thing, for them to remember the ending of um, the IR verbs in the present tense. For the um, RE verbs in the present tense, I use um, Frère Jacques. So it's S, S, Sh. S S Sh O N S Z O N S Z E N T E N T S S Sh you know and 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 so on. Uh, <clears throat> I'm a terrible singer, but I love singing. Um, but yeah, so um, so I use those, uh, and I use I use a lot more. But as I said before, it's great to use a song for the students to remember. But you need to ensure that they know that which ending goes with which subject pronouns and most importantly what that subject pronoun mean in English otherwise you know there's absolutely no point of them knowing those ending if they cannot apply them. An activity that I do as well um, um, that was um, it, it's the paper chain activity. So for this activity usually I demonstrate that activity so I'll just explain um, and at the end, if it's something is not is not really clear, just just let me know. So what you have to do for um for that activity, you need to have two pieces of paper per pair. So all your students are working in twos, and they've got let's say a blue piece of paper and a pink piece of paper. On the blue piece of paper, they will have a list of sentences in the target language. On the pink piece of paper, they will have a list of sentences in English. However, the sentences in the target language and the ones in English, they do not match at all. So it's not a matching activity, it's just for them to translate. And what the students have to do, they have to cut the first sentence. So if they started with the blue piece of paper, so they had the sentence in the target language. So what they have to do, they have to translate that sentence into English. When they think they've got the right answer, they need to then run to you. You need to check their answer. So you need to check that it's you know, completely right, that the accuracy is spot on. And if it's right, what they have to do, they have to do a little circle and just you know, uh, stick you know, the, um, uh, the end together. But then what is really important, you need to ask the students to alternate the colors. So then they need to move to a pink sentence, so they cut uh, one of the uh, pink sentences, so it's the sentences in English, and what they have to do, they have to translate it in the target language, they come to you, you check if it's right, and then you start the paper chain. Why it is important to alternate the colors? Well, just because otherwise all the students do prefer translating the sentences from the target language to English because they find it a lot easier. So with that, it means that uh, they don't really have the choice and they do have to alternate and obviously it's the longest chain at the end that um, wins and same thing that takes a good you know a good 20-25 minutes of your lesson the students absolutely love it and um, so same thing you can use that activity to practice you know grammar complex structures word order and so on ping pong verbs um, so <clears throat> this activity is um, quite fun as well and um, so what you have to do you've got three ping pong balls with some subject pronouns written on them so one might be she one might be we and one might be um they and the students they've got five points for each pronoun which they can correctly conjugate um um, so let's say that they've got, you know, as I said, you know, uh, she, we, and they. If I give them the verb, uh, you know, to listen, écouter, they need to conjugate that in the tense that you want, and 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 uh, and so on. Same thing. You can, in terms of differentiation, you can make sure that you um, give maybe more um, irregular verbs to your more able students and more common verbs um, to your. Um, you know, maybe, you know, four or five borderlines um, uh, uh, students. Adding fun, obviously, I only do that with classes that I can really, really trust, not all of them. Um, 
you know, for extra points, you know, I might have, you know, usually I use a bin. Um, and if it can throw the ball back into the bin, then, you know, they get an extra point. But that's just for fun. It's nothing to do with, uh, with learning this one. La course aux grenouilles, uh, I use a frogs because I bought them on Amazon and I thought they were that cute. But you can use absolutely anything. So I've got um, about 16 different frogs and under every single one of them, I've got a number. So number one to 16. The students are playing in pairs and all my little frogs are on my desk at the top, uh, at the front, sorry. And what the students have to do in pairs, so they need to come to me, grab a frog, go back to their team, and if they've got frog number three, they need to translate the sentence number three. As soon as they finished it, they need to come back to me, put the frog back on my desk, and then get another frog. So if this time they get a frog number 10, they need to go back to their team with the person next to them, they need to translate sentence number 10 and so on. But if you see my frogs were in the right order when I started, but as the students keep coming and getting some, they're all in the random order. So sometimes the kids are really waiting for a number to come because, you know, they need to finish the grade, you know, uh, first. So same thing is just adding an element of fun um, and um, a different way for them um, to conjugate. Contre la souris, against the mouse, I'm sure that you know this activity and I'm more than happy to send you the template as well if you've not got it. But the idea is really, really easy, is that on the black um, screen, you've got a verb, so you can have it in the target language or in English, it doesn't matter. But the students have to translate it before the mouse gets into the, um, into the hole. Okay? So it finishes, so they need to do il finit before the mouse disappears. Okay, and then obviously you check the answer and you check, you know, the um, accuracy. So the students, you know, they do it, I make them do it on the mini whiteboard so I can check that they also know not only how to say it, but how to write it, especially with the fini. I don't want them to write il fini with an S at the end. I want them to write it with a T. You know, she plays, elle joue, the same thing, they need to say it before the mouse disappears. So it's just a different activity that the students enjoy. Okay, the mix and match, match sentences is one that works really well. So <clears throat> I've got four, so let's pretend, so this activity, last time I've done it, it was with, a, uh, with one of my um, year eight classes. I've got 32 students uh, in both my year eight classes. So I've got four teams of eight students, okay? And each team gets a set of cards, knowing that all my teams get the same cards. So my team one gets a set of cards, and my team two will get exactly the same set of cards, okay? Um, and each pupil have to get a card from their own set. And then, as a competition, they need to line up recreating the sentence in the right order, okay? And the first thing to do it you know, gets um, a, a, a point. So same thing, that's to practice the word order. So like I've put an example here. So on one card, I had E. On another one, I had M apostrophe. Then I had pas, ne, entend, avec, bien, and je. So they had to put themselves in je ne m'entends pas bien avec E in the right order. And the first team to do that will get a point for their, uh, for their team. So it's an easy one to do. Um, and then obviously I did that first as a group uh, to then, um, because I wanted them to do then um, an activity on their own to practice those kind of sentences. So I thought, I thought it would be best to first do like a little group activity um, so they could collaborate um, together. So this activity, you can do it in loads and loads of different ways. So um, you can call it as well the way that you want. So who would be the, the, the fastest? So you, uh, the fastest, sorry. So you, you've got your class. Your class is a split in two teams. I always do the team competition in my class. So I've always got my team um, Pain au chocolat and my team Croissant, or I've got my team Madrid and my team Barcelona. So depending on... Um, my Spanish or French classes. So I've got my two teams, 
On each team, I give a students a number. So if I use again, year seven or year eight, year eight or year nine class, usually we've got 32 students in our classes. So I've got number one to 16 on my team uh, croissant and one to 16 in my team pain au chocolat. Then I will ask a question. It's really, really important that you ask the question first. Then you give the students a bit of thinking time thinking thinking time and then you shout a number so like for example if i say how do you say it will be i pause give them a bit of thinking time and then i said number five so then both number five from both teams they need to stand up and shout the answer in the target language and the fastest will get a point so why am i asking the question first is because if you ask the number first then the rest of the class won't pay attention or try to find the answer. But if you ask a question, well, they know that it could be them. So it could be anyone in the room. But also something to do is that, like, for example, my example, I gave number five, you know, uh, pick number five. But then maybe two or three times later, I'll pick number five again. So number five, I realize that we cannot just chill for the rest of the lesson or the rest of the activity and that we should still be, you know, on fire and try to, you know, listen and answer the, the, the question. Then there's loads of alternatives to that, um, to that game. One of them is that the pupils, you know, with that number, race to the front, collect, you know, a, a, a pen and write their answer on a mini whiteboard. So depending on the layout, the, unfortunately, I do not have my own classroom um, because um, I'm SLT, so I'm going from one class to the other. So um, some, sometimes, depending on the layout of your classroom, you might think, well, some of my students have no chance to get to the board at the same time of the others. So I don't know if you know um, the magic whiteboards, but you can buy it uh, online. And basically, it's a piece of paper that acts as a whiteboard, but can stick everywhere. So it does stick on windows, on wall, on doors, on absolutely everything. And you use it as a whiteboard. So depending on the layout of the classroom where I am, uh, sometimes I use different um, a magic whiteboards on the on the walls or windows or whatever is around so then it's easier for the students to to get to so same activity but this one they uh, they race to the board collect the pen and write the answer in the target language another alternative is that um, every single student um, use their mini whiteboard so you ask a question same thing give them thinking time where they write, you know, the answer on their mini whiteboard, then you shout a number and it was just two students. So if you use number eight, it's both number eight from each team to put their whiteboard up. If they both got it right, it's a point for each team. If one, you know, misspelled it or missed something, obviously it's a point for the, uh, for the other team. Another alternative to the same game is that um, this time, um, you give both teams a set of cards. So same thing I've learned from mistakes, so make sure you use two different colored ca cards. So like, for example, green and, and red. So your team Madrid will get the red um, cards and your team Barcelona, your green cards. But obviously, the red and the green cards are exactly the same. Um, and this time, you know, you might say, how do you say, um, I get on well with? Um, and the, the, the two person with Je m'entends bien avec need to stand up and say the word. Um, and then, you know, between the team, they can swap the cards uh, if you want to, uh, to play this activity again. So there's loads of different um, ways of playing exactly the same activity. But every time, every um, activity um, with a bit of competition, the kids are really, really up for it uh, and really engaged. This activity as well, so I've got, so for this activity, same thing again, let's pretend you've got a class of 32. So you've got 16 cards in the target language and 16 cards in English. But obviously the English is a translation of um, whatever is on your cards in the target language. So I use it with to practice tenses, okay? So every single of my uh, students get a card. 
Then I'll put some music on. And the rule is when the music on, it's complete silence and the kids are just swapping cards. So they're walking around the room and they swap cards. When the music stops, they need to find their partner. So let's say that someone had Ilia, they need to find there is. If someone got je suis, they need to find I am. And as soon as they found their um, partner, I ask them to line up. So then straight away, I can see who's got their partner and who's still doing the activity. At some point, because obviously the activity, you don't want the activity to last, you know, um, hours. So um, I've got, at some point, I will stop the activity and I will have a little um, lost and found corner. So all the students who didn't find their partner, they need to come to that little corner with me straight away and make them show their cards to each other and straight away like, oh, we're together, oh, we're together. And then they go and line up. And why do they go and line up? Because then what I ask them to do, I ask every single one of them to read their card. So, you know, you will have je suis, then the next person should say, I am then say it is je suis allé i went or whatever you've put on those cards and then what i'll do again the music will start again they walk around the classroom they swap cards you stop the music and they need to find their pairs again so it's same thing it's just a way of practicing you know um any type of um conjugation and recognizing you know um the meaning of uh, the verbs okay so for this activity, same thing, I use it quite a lot. So that was, we, uh, I don't have any photos of the schools in my, uh, my current school. So that's from my previous school. But I use it a lot. Same thing, you can only do this activity with classes you really, really trust. So in my current school, I do this activity with two of my classes um, because the others will be way too giddy and way too silly with it. Um, so what I do, I've got loads of different balloons. Inside the balloon, I put like a little um, um, word. So let's say on one balloon, I put um, le passé. Then on one, I've got l'imparfait, le futur, opinion positive, opinion negative, adjective. You, you know, you can have whatever you want, okay? But inside, I just put like a little note with um, one possible answer, okay? Then all the balloons, you know, are um, <clears throat> flying in the air. When the kids get it, they need to write an answer. So like, for example, if they had um, adjective, you know, they could write, you know, intéressant. And then as soon as they've written one, they need to throw it to someone else. Someone else pick it and need to write another one and so on. Um, but at the end of the activity, what we do is that we look at all the words that's been picked. And then I pop the balloon. So let's say that it was the one on adjectives and let's say that inside I did put génial, great, as one of them. If anyone in the room has written génial on their balloon, they, they are the winner. So they get, you know, a point. So something is just a little activity to practice brainstorm some of the, um, the tenses, vocab or, um, you, you know, whatever grammar point you want to, uh, to revise with them. Just a minute is an easy one to do. Um, and I do it regularly, you know, as a, as a starter activity. So you've got some infinitive on one side and you've got any tense and any pronoun on the other side. So here I've used, you know, I and I've used the past tense. So what you do with your class, very easy as well. You've got one student um, facing the board and one student turning their back to the door, uh, to, the, um, to, the, um, to the board, sorry. And they've got a minute to test each other. So the person looking at the board, they need to say the infinitive. And then the person not looking at the board needs to say, you know, the past using je, uh, the, the subject pronoun I. Um, and obviously, well, here, there's only few to practice. So that won't last a minute. So they need to go back to it, go back to it. But something it's really important that you train your class. So what I said to, to mine, if you know that you had to give them the answer, for example, for être, j'ai été, if you had to give them the answer because they didn't know, then you need to make sure that you keep testing, 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 testing that person on the one they didn't know. to swap the order, you know, and, um, and so on. And I said, if they get it right straight away, then you, you said the past tense and they need to give you the infinitive. And after a minute, you just swap. So the person who was 
not facing the board, he's going to face the board and then he's going to test the person who was looking at it, who then is going to turn their back um, to the board and be tested. Um, <clears throat> This one, you know, uh, four in a row, same thing. Um, it's interactive. So here I just use it as a starter. And I just, you know, I've got my two teams. So my team croissant, my team pain au chocolat. I'll ask someone to pick something. So they will say, you know, E2. Okay. And I will say, okay, Matthew, um, comment dit-on? And then you ask them to say something. So something I use, I use it with, with um, conjugation, it can be any tense. I mix up the tense as well because it is mixed up um, in general, not in, in real situation. Um, so I don't, you know, I don't want them to only practice the past or the future. I really want to, to mix it. If they get it right, you know, and they say they're the right team, um, here, but if you click again, it becomes, you know, yellow. And if you click, click again, it um, starts again being back on the, on, on the blue. So same thing, what, what is quite good not to have prepared in advance, having a not having a list of questions on the board, is that depending who you pick in each team, you can pick a tense or a verb that is appropriate to that person. So I won't ask something extremely challenging to someone who's really struggling. And I won't ask something very easy to someone who's excelling, you know, in French or in Spanish. So something you can differentiate, you know, uh, that way. This one is very easy as well. Um, so behind the grid, I've got 15 yellow um, circles. And what the students have to do, they need to give me a number in the target language and I make them give the number in the target language because I'm sure you experience exactly the same thing as me. They're great with numbers in year seven and in year eight. And then it comes to key stage four and your year 11 can't even say 15 or 70 or whatever, which drives me completely insane. So same thing. What I do sometimes instead of doing one to 42, I'll start at 50 um, and then to whatever number to make sure they practice, you know, um, the number. So they have to give me a number in the target language. And then let's say that someone uh, picks, you know, number 10, so numero 10, then I will ask them a question. They need to give me the answer. And then we, we really, I didn't do it on purpose. I knew a yellow circle was there. But if there's a yellow circle, then they can get something. So I either ask, I usually give them the choice when I do this activity. They can either have a sweet, a chocolate, a grape, or a merit. Believe me, giving them one grape, they love eating grapes. And just one grape, that makes them really, really happy. So there's always the healthy option, just in case, um, and so on. However, what's really important, uh, and especially I've noticed with the boys, because the boys are very, very competitive, next time you do that activity, you need to make sure you change uh, where you've put those yellow circles because some of them can remember really well where those yellow circles were. Um, so make sure that you mix them around. Here, the bomb or uh, the treasure, same thing. It's an easy one. You can have anything on them. And um, I always try to find activities as well where the students can... Um, especially if you play in teams, to always make sure that until the very end, everyone can win. Because sometimes you end up and you go and observe loads of lessons and people do the team competition, which is great, I always do it. But sometimes one team is on 112, the other team is on 22. And no matter what you do to help that team, you know that they're never ever going to catch up to the other one. So when I do activities like this one, until the very end, everyone can win and um, so here what they have to do they just pick one of the words and they need to translate it if it's something in the target language they have to translate in english if it's in english they have to translate in the target language and then underneath they are you know different points but there's also gosh i can't find it there's a bomb so let's say that one team was on 45 points and the other one on five but if the team on five, no, if the team on 45 then get the question with a bomb underneath, well, then they lose all their points. So that's why I'm saying, and there's obviously more than one in, in the game. The same thing when you play that game again, you need to make sure you mix, mix them around because the students remember. And um, something that I've noticed as well, 
the students absolutely, usually, and I'm sure you will agree with me, um, some students are reluctant to write. You know, they don't write the writing. Um, so what I do, I let them write on what they want. So there's, you can buy on Amazon, you can buy some special pens where you can write on the windows. Um, and then, I mean, as soon as you use a wipe, then it just completely disappears. And here, if you write on your table with a marker pen and use a baby wipe, it completely disappears. So sometimes when I just want to practice something with them, what I just do is that then I go around with my phone, with my iPad, whatever you got with you, you take some pictures and then you just show, show, show it to the class and we work together on the possible mistakes, you know, how we can make it better, you know, um, if there's some accents missing, you know, and things like that. So here, you know, you can see some mistakes on there, but we work it as a class. Um, and same thing, it does motivate the students to, um, you know, to write. And then they're more likely to write a piece, you know, a piece of writing in their book if they've done a bit of practice, you know, on whatever you want them to, to use before. And this activity is very easy as well. You know, you pick any verb, you pick any tense, and they need to go around the clouds uh, using uh, the different subject pronouns. So they start with je, um, so they have to conjugate regarder in the tense that you want using I, then you, then he, she, uh, we, then we, uh, you, and then they, and so on. Um, or sometimes what you do as well, I make them do it in a, um, um, in circle, so, you know, in a, in, in a small group, and I give them a different verb each on a on different piece of paper and they write one and then they swap it with the person next, next to them and so on. So there's a lot of different ways you can use it. Round robin is a very one, a good one to use as a, I always do it first as a class before they do it as a, you know, in small group. So here as a class, you pick a verb, you pick um, a tense, and then you start. So you, you pick on someone and they start conjugating that verb in the tense that you've picked. Then you ask someone else, but they need to repeat the first one and then say the second one. Then when you ask person number three, they say what person one said, person two, and then they say, you know, theirs, and so on. Um, so it's just another way of practicing the order of the verbs in the tense that, uh, that you want. Um, Jenga, um, a few years ago, I went to Asda, and the Jenga were on the sale. They were only two pounds, so I bought eight, eight um, games so my classes could play in teams of four. Um, the same thing, you know, you learn from your mistake and I was very disappointed that Ryan, who was driving me completely insane at the time, I actually uh, made a very fair point and I was really disappointed uh, with myself because um, when I got those uh, Jenga games, I convinced my husband to help me um, writing a number on every single um, um, little block. So you can imagine there's a lot of them and we had eight packs to do. And then on a piece of paper, I wrote question one to question, you know, I can't remember how many uh, blocks um, is in the game of Jenga. And what the kids had to do in groups of four, so um, they had to get, you know, obviously play Jenga, but every time they were taking a block out, there was a number on it and they had to look through the paper I gave them, ask that question, the answer was on it so they could test, you know, test each other. And at the end of the game, Ryan who was in my A11 at the time, I did that just before their mock exam to practice like random vocab. And uh, Ryan said, uh, Miss, why on earth did you spend so much time writing a number on those blocks? Because you could just have given us a piece of paper with all your questions and we would just have gone in order asking each other the different questions. And you know when you're like so mad at someone because he, you know you know he's right and it's you know someone very cheeky telling you that. So please do not do the same, do not make the same mistake as me and do not waste your time writing numbers on blogs because there's absolutely no need for it. Um, this one is a good one to use as well. So same thing I use um, one infinitive, so here it's avoir as an example, and I use it in loads of different forms, okay? So I must have, I can have, I, um, I'm going to have, I should have, you know, and so on. So the first activity that the students have to do, very easy, they just need to match them up, okay? So they can just do that. But then what, you know, you might want to ask some of 
your students to do is like, okay, well, if je veux avoir is I want to have, how would you say I want to listen? I want to go out. I want to chat. I want to download, you, you know, and, 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 and things like that. So I do uh, that activity as a start, as a start uh, you know, quite often as well, just to practice, you know, the different ways. But actually, and, and what I've noticed, especially with, you know, my grade four and my grade five candidates, is that if they nail that je with those 10, and if they know those 10 really, really well, and they can use it on the writing and the speaking, well, that's it, that's fine. You know, they'll do well. So um, that's why I, I constantly, you know, repeat that activity, that's an easy, easy one to do. Okay, the phrase auction as well, um, very easy, this one. So, you know, you put a sentence in the target language, then you put the answer, um, in the target language, but it's not necessarily right. Some of them might have mistakes and the students need to bet and decide if it's accurate or not. So like here, for example, I like my teacher because he's kind, but I put parce qu'il a gentil, one of the mistakes that they make. But they need to bet and decide, well, is it true or is it not true? And if it's not true, what is the correct answer? Uh, some of the grammar that I use as well, from to, so from one verb form to another. So like, for example, if I use je, the students have to give me a nous or il or, uh, you know, or vous or whatever. So here, for example, if I say je vais, they need to give me nous allons. If I say je regarde, they need to say nous regardons. Another one that you can do, you, um, from one tense to another. So if I said the past tense, they need to give me the present tense using the same subject pronoun. So if I say on a écouté, they need to say on, on écoute. If I say j'ai uh, joué, they need to say je joue. Um, and then the most tricky one, from affirmative to negative, because uh, I'm sure same thing, you know, we all teach the same students, they struggle where to put the ne pas in the, you know, or ne jamais in the, sen in the sentence. So you give them one and they need to give you the negative. Um, conjugating in team, so you've got your, um, so you divide your class into different teams and you line them up facing the board. Or same thing, you can use the magic whiteboard as I mentioned. So the first person from each team comes to the board and writes any one form of the verb on the review. So let's say that you put regarder, they, they can put on regard if they want. They do not have to start with je, okay? But then he ends the whiteboard pen to the next person and they need to put another form of the verb. And basically it's the first team with the je to the, you know, when I T they all correct that will um, um, uh, win the, 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 the game. If you want your class to do this activity in silence, because sometimes, you know, you won't, well, very easy. The only thing that you have to do every time that someone talks, you just get rid of one of the verbs that they've written on the board. Believe me, it does work and it makes them shush. Um, so you can do it this way. And something to make it more challenging, you can have two or three columns with different, uh, different verbs. I'm sure, you know, you use dice quite a lot. I use dice all the time. So same thing here, it's past tense, ER verbs. You've got your pronouns on one side, infinities on the others. So you give them two dice, they roll the dice. And let's say they've got three and six, so they need to use il and elle with regarder. So they need to write il a regarder. Same thing, it's really important if they do it in pairs that you make them write on their mini whiteboard, so then you can check that what they think is the right answer is the right answer. You don't want them to think that something is right if it's not. Sudoku, I use that quite a lot as well. So here's an example when I um, did avoir and être um, with my year sevens. And then I, as a homework, they have to do a, um, a Sudoku as well with, you know, finding, you know, the, 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 the missing ones. Uh, and that worked, you know, really, really well. Um, Make students find out a grammar rule by themselves. So I've used that re recently with the comparative. <clears throat> so I gave them loads of sentences with the comparatives and they, they had to come up with the rule by themselves in something, you know, uh, that sometimes I found they remember it better if it's coming from them first. And central uh, puzzle, so same thing, you give them um, words in a different order and they need to put it in the right order. So it's really good to practice word order with the negatives, with, you know, uh, the place of the adjectives in the sentence and so on. And if you don't know that website, um, you can type any sentence and it will mix up the words for you and um, uh, for free, obviously. So um, you can use that. 
here um, I'm doing quite a lot and I'm sure it's the same with you, uh, you know, listening is an issue, so making sure that the students um, really um, work on their listening skills and trying to make them feel more confident with their listening skills. So, you know, I will say some sentences to them in the target language and they just need to write down the verb that is conjugated. Um, so it's the only thing they have to concentrate on in what they, uh, they're listening. Um, <clears throat> Same thing to encourage, you know, uh, confidence in uh, listening. I say sentence and you need to tell me which tense it is. Um, <clears throat> the corner game. Okay, so for this activity, I've got four students and um, one in um, a different corner of the room. I ask the rest of the class to have their, their, their table or no, their knowledge organizer in front of them. Then I pick a student to say a verb in any tense in English from their knowledge organizer or their verb table, whatever you're using. And the first person in the corners to shout out the correct translation of the phrase move clockwise to the next one. So let's say that I've got, you know, your corner one, two, three, four. Let's say that it was corner three who gave the right answer first then corner three is going to move to corner four. So the person who was in corner four then is knocked out and has to go back and sit down. If the corner is empty, then everyone is safe and another pupil, you know, calls out the next verb. Um, so, so it's just a different activity to you. But I always use the rest of the class as referee and I always ask the rest of the class, I ask randomly the students to pick a word um, in English, so they, then same thing, they keep looking and um, looking at their verb table and they're not sitting down doing and uh, doing anything. Okay, um, I don't let the students in the corners putting their hand up because you never see who's first and it always creates complications. So it's whoever says it uh, first. Okay, and as a variation, sometimes when I've got, you know, when I teach my big classes, I've got two students in each corner so they can help each other. Grammar practice, I don't know if you know that um, website, but it's free as well. And it's just a good way to practice um, verb ending. Um, so you can do that for homework, but I've just copied and pasted some of their example from their website. So you can have, you can have it on, you know, accent, on words, on a, a, a mixture of different verbs, on nouns, on absolutely everything. And so that's a, a good one to look at um, and, you know, maybe to set for homework. I've presented a few times, you know, the games from Technologic, but it's great games for PowerPoint, completely free as well, that you can be using. And now there's also the um, 10 more PowerPoint games. So in total, there's 20. But here are the, uh, the two different links. Um, and it's activities in that, you know, that's just an example of an activity. So, you know, I put random verbs and the students pick the one that they want, they give me the English and they get, they get some, um, some points, okay? So, um, so that's it. Okay, oh, this activity is quite a good, um, a good one. So you've got some sentences appearing. So let me go back, okay? So just to explain. So for this activity, the students cannot or write anything down. They just need to memorize the sentences that are appearing and disappearing from the board. So here I've used that in my key stage four with complex structure. So the first one was il faut, um, il faut que je fasse, this one was bien que ce soit, and so on. So they just appear and disappear and they have to remember them. Okay. And then go quickly okay so and so on so there's a few of them and then what as soon as it does finished in pairs on their um, whiteboard or on the table wherever you want them to write they need to try to memorize well they need to try to write down the sentences that they've memorized so i do that quite a lot with complex structures but i want them to use in their speaking and in their writing um and it's an activity that works uh, really well. And obviously then we go through, uh, through it. The paper plane and the um, um, airplane, um, paper airplane. So um, I put on um, a paper plate or a uh, paper airplane, um, a, a verb in an in, in, in tense. And we use the uh, paper, um, paper plate as a frisbee and we throw the uh, paper airplane and when the kids get it 
they just need to look at the verb, look at the tense, and conjugate it in the right, um, in the right verb, and then we throw it to someone else, and, and so on. And then what I do is that I use the visualizer, put the uh, paper airplane or the paper plate underneath, and then the students, um, and then we can uh, check that it's all accurate, if there's anyone missing, you know, and, and so on. Grammar project, something that I do, especially with year eight, you know, so in year seven, we do, um, uh, you know, the present tense, and we go quite in depth with the present tense, and so on. Obviously, in any topic that we do, we always recap all the tenses. So then in year eight, and um, when I do uh, recap the present tense, one of their um, homework project is to create a lesson explaining that tense to the year seven. And I explained to them, I said, well, you know, last year when you were in year seven, we learned about the, you know, the present tense. So don't you think it would be a great idea if actually our current year seven are learning from you? Um, and the students can do it in any way. So, you know, in any way that they want. So some are doing posters, some PowerPoint, some little videos. But the world they produce is incredible. And it's a good way for the year eight to I actually remind themselves about how to use that tense or that grammar point. It can be about anything. Um, and then for the year seven, well, instead of you, it's, you know, they get the information from someone else and they really like it. Um, so it's just a different one to do. This activity, so very, um, very quickly. So you've got, you can have any sentence in the, in the middle. So je joue au tennis. And then what the students have to do, number one, they need to ask you a question about that. Number two, an exclamation about that. Number three, they need to give you a positive opinion about it. Number four, they need to give you a negative opinion about it. Number five, they need to give you that sentence in the future tense. And number six, they need to give you that sentence in the past tense. And same thing, once you've got the template, the only thing you've got to do is to change the sentence. But why number one is so important is I'm sure, you know, it's the same for you, but um, students struggle asking a question, especially in French with the qu'est-ce que, est que, you know, there's no really like pattern about what the question words really mean, you know, it sometimes can mean different ways depending on the question, so I really want to concentrate on that, so that's an easy activity to do. Um, and then knowledge retrieval, so some of the starter activities that I do, so same thing, you know, to practice the, 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 the grammar, so, you know, they can conjugate a verb, they could translate the word, same thing, you know, there isn't a cinema, il n'y a pas de cinema, the number of students who say il n'y a pas de un cinema, so it's just to reinforce things that we've, you know, learned in the past, and if you're wondering about number five, it's the first letter of each word, uh, so here it was, je dirais que ma ville est petite. Or you can say, je dirais que ma ville est propre, je, je dirais que ma ville est paisible. And then we can see with the, with the class how many we can find. So some say, oh, je dirais que ma ville est pittoresque, and, and, and so on. Another one that I, I use, same activity, five a day. So and as a starter, so the students have to conjugate one verb, make a list of anything that you want. What is the odd one out? Then uh, they need to correct, to correct, so obviously we do not say je suis saison, but we say j'ai saison, um, and then to translate. Another one that I do very quickly, and I'll be finished soon, really sorry about that. So um, here for this one, so there's three different rounds. So the students need to look at the list, and then they've got um, some words are going to disappear, and we've got 15 seconds to write the missing words. So just to show you an example, they've got that list. So we've got the English and the French. And then after 15 seconds, some of the words disappear. And what they have to do at the back of their book, you know, they have to find, I went there to write, je suis allé, Hélène, they need to write, she likes, you know, and so on. I do not collect their marks, it's for them. And what I do, few times that we do this activity, I'm just asking them if they made progress or not. Um, then second round, they've got 15 seconds to answer every single question, just to see if they can remember the information, okay? So here, they've got 15 seconds to put what they think is the right answer, okay? And then we go through it. Or sometimes they say, oh, uh, Mark and Jenny, well, that's correct as well, you know, and, 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 and so on. Here's something, they've got 15 seconds to write what is the missing word. And then we, but again, I do not collect um, the, um, 
the marks, it's for them. So it's low stake tasting. Okay, and so on, and so on. And then the third um, round, so the students, um, they've got four questions and they've got 45 seconds to answer them. So they've got that in front of them and I give them only 45 seconds, which is not a lot at all. And, all, you know, at the back of their book, they need to write, you know, the correct um, answer. So some are easier than others. And then we go through them and they um, mark their own, um, their own work, okay? And we all use knowledge retrieval grids. So usually the way we use the knowledge retrieval grids, we've got some words um, in the target language or in English and they have to translate it in the other way. But I've, and, and I know that we all doing that, but I've slightly tweaked it as well for key stage four. And the way I've do, I've, I do it as well is that I put an answer on the, so that's the answer. And they need to tell me what would have been the question. So same thing for them to practice asking a question. So um, here, obviously, we've done two examples. So some of them, you've, uh, you might think, oh my goodness me, it's difficult. But we've done loads of practice. Actually, my year 11s were capable of doing, you know, of doing those ones. So I'm really, really sorry. I went really, really quick. Um, but if you've got any questions, just feel free to ask. Thank you. That was absolutely amazing. You, what were you saying? I'm really, really sorry. It's fantastic what you've done for us there, Jenny. Um, perhaps if you'd like to unshare your screen now. Yeah. Um, and then if people would like to just open up their um, videos and their mics to be able to give you applause. There are just a couple of questions afterwards, but I think it would be best to start with by saying thank you so much to you. Welcome. Absolutely amazing. But I've, I've lost your, um, I've lost your, there we are. Where, where have you gone? But, oh yes, you're right in the middle there. So if you'd like, everybody would like to applaud. And can I say hello oh. to people on YouTube as well? Oh. If you'd like to applaud too. <laughs> yeah. And we've got comments there. What I'd love you to do now, everybody, as well, if you could write your thanks in the chat, because it's lovely for the presenters afterwards to, be able to read it. I can see in the chat in YouTube as well, um, Senorita Yafi is saying, wow, I want her energy. Esmeralda is saying, fantastic ideas. Paula Morel, thank you so much for many great ideas. So I've been sitting here. Actually, I suppose I could show you perhaps with my webcam that I've got here. There you are, and over there, I've got the YouTube link, and there's my conservatory, it's a right mess, I don't want to show it anymore. <laughs> but really, um, absolutely fantastic. You know, your uh, amazing ideas, fantastic ideas. I can see why you call this grammar is fun. That was fun. Mm -hmm. As you were going through, people were just saying, oh, I'd love to do this, or these are the sorts of ideas. Superb presentation. I mean, you had us engaged all the time, and how lucky you're students are to have you really and your colleagues to have all of those ideas so thank you so much jennifer really good we'll enjoy i will enjoy watching this back as well because i'll confess that quite a lot of the time i was getting a bit anxious about the tech but really I, it was lovely and i would say to anybody who hasn't seen jennifer before um you know just go and see her whenever you can you've seen her now and there is a really good um webinar you did a webinar for linguoscope didn't you yeah a couple of weeks ago and it's really fantastic to watch so um thank you ever so much really really good um i'd also like to thank um joe dale and hiker who are over there in the youtube i do feel as if this is a bit like you know as i say proms in the park over there while we're in the royal albert hall um but you know, thank you very much to Joe Dale and to Heike Philp, who've been there looking at everything going on there. And thanks ever so much to Oliver Hopwood here, who at the very, very short notice volunteered to help out. So thank you so much. That was really, really good, Jennifer. Thank, thank you, you so much. And I'm going to carry on the recording just because if anybody's got any questions, I mean, it seemed to me that nearly every question that people put in the chat, someone else would then answer. So if I can just um, establish, Jennifer, that it's okay, you're, you're going to let us have, you normally give us a link to your, yeah. basically. Yeah, what, well, I will, I will give a link, the link of, the, of the presentation, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we'll have the presentation. So on the presentation, then you would see uh, the references, the web links. We loved your, the templates you used for your games. Mm -hmm. um, and there were quite a few people saying, oh, please, you know, could we have copies of that? So I think that would be, within your presentation and it yeah. seems within those that what was it called the techno 
technology. Yeah. Technology. Yeah. There's the, there's the normal one and there's the 10 more PowerPoint games. So there's yeah. two different links as well. Yeah. Mm. And obviously also, I just loved the, I mean, the presentation, the images, the fun. Mm. Um, and you'll enjoy, you will enjoy reading through the chat because there were, there were quite a few things. So I think, you know, the point where you said grab the frogs um, <laughs> and then the idea of grapes as well. What did someone say? Bring on the grapes. We tend to all think about chocolate, but bring on the <laughs> No, they, you give them only one tiny grape and believe me, they, they go crazy. You know, who would think that one grape would make kids happy? But yeah, it does. <laughs> and someone suggested, someone who said that perhaps 12 was, I don't know, grapes might be difficult. But perhaps half a grape would be all right. So, I mean, look at all these lovely comments. Bravo, Jennifer. C'était génial. Merci beaucoup. Thank Fantastic. You. So really, really great. So thank you ever so much. And if, I've, if there's anybody who's got a burning question that I haven't asked, if you could put it in the chat now so that we can quickly look at it because I, I did I kept on writing the questions and then crossed it out as somebody had uh, had the answers but I think everyone's saying thank you very informative someone said are the resources or templates going to be available the answer to that Noala is yes yes and Stephanie is saying je veux travailler avec vous quelle énergie et motivation <laughs> <laughs> so um oh someone has said yes how will we do, how will we send the information well what we do um Helen is you will have reached this through coming through the AWL web website, I'm assuming. Yes. There's a webinar page. And then for every webinar we have, we have a page for that webinar. And on that, I will put the details, the picture. Oh, in a minute, I'll take a photo. We have a class photo of the people who are here um, and then any links. And in fact, I think I've already possibly shared the, the link. It's not live yet. It's all ready to go. I'll just, I'll give you the link now. So it isn't live now. It's, that's another thing I've learned how to do is to make like, make them private until they're, so I'm, I'm putting it in the chat for both the Zoom and the YouTube. So probably in about an hour or so. Yeah, in about an hour, it'll be there with, with some links. So Helen, no, you don't have to be a member, but we really, really hope that you like us so much that you will join a double l because that ought to be the particular because you're a member aren't you Jen jennifer's member lots yeah. of people are members so I, I was a member um and i will rejoin brilliant <laughs> helen thank you very much <laughs> didn't see that you were actually there so um any other questions otherwise i'm going to take a picture of who's here and uh, i like this bit and i will by the way all of the youtube chat as well i'll copy so that that's all part of it because I've, I've been trying to make it so that the youtubers know what we're doing in this with the zoomers and the youtubers um are together here so so i'm about to take a picture do you know i was going to get my microphone out of the way then i'm just don't, don't know what i'm doing here so this is page one of two so one two three there we are and oh lovely that's right that's one page and I'm going to go to the next page of two. So I'm now on the page with Pilar and Mart and Mrs. Flint is there. <laughs> Mrs. Flint of Bring on the Grapes. And let's go. So one, two, three. Oh, didn't work. One, two, three. <laughs> there we are. Let me just select you all. And oh, K Mason five, you had your eyes closed. I'm just going to do it once more. <laughs> okay. Oh, one, two, three. And there we are. Lovely. So that'll be ready for the um, for the web page. Oh, okay. Oh, someone said, "How much is it to join?" If I put, I'll put on the links how much it is. To be honest, I can't think off the top of my head. I know that we make it that for whatever it costs you for a year. If you come to AWL London events, our two events, you save the money for joining, and there are different different rates. So. Um, Okay, so I think now I'm going to stop the recording unless there's anything else that's urgent. Let's see if I can do that. Stop the recording. Do you want to stop the recording?